everybody, welcome back to Drug Talk. This is episode 21. As always, I'm your host, Garrett Campbell. Today we're going to be discussing a medication that goes by the name of hydrochlorothiazide, or by its brand name, hydrodiarel. This medication is classified as both a diuretic as well as an antihypertensive agent. There are other forms, but most commonly we see this as a 25 milligram and a 50 milligram tablet. Although some of these indications are similar, there are five indications for this medication. The first one and most common use would be the treatment of high blood pressure or hypertension. It's used to treat edema associated with heart failure. It can help treat hepatic cirrhosis with ascites. It can treat drug-induced edema. And lastly, edema from a kidney origin. Now when this medication is being prescribed, there are some precautions or warnings that's a good idea for the patient to be made aware of. The first is that orthostatic hypotension may occur. This is a sudden drop in blood pressure when an individual goes from a seated to a standing position. This happens more commonly when people are using this medication alongside with alcohol, barbiturates, or narcotic medications. Also, electrolyte abnormalities may occur. It's been noted that this medication can decrease the concentration of sodium, potassium, magnesium, as well as zinc. Rarely, it's been noted that there can be a rapid onset of severe hyponatremia, low sodium, or hypokalemia, low potassium, after the initial dose of this medication. After an event like this, a physician would usually reevaluate the appropriateness of a thiazide diuretic in the individual who experienced these low electrolytes. Now, individuals who have impaired hepatic function or liver function, as well as progressive liver disease, should be monitored very carefully for signs of electrolyte disturbances. Hydrochlorothiazide and other thiazide-like diuretics may decrease the glomerular filtration rate in your kidneys, as well as precipitate something known as azotemia. Azotemia is the buildup of nitrogen-containing compounds in your blood, such as urea, creatinine, and other body waste compounds. So this is something that could be monitored through blood work. The risk of occupational hazards should also be mentioned to patients receiving this medication because it can potentially cause dizziness or a drop in blood pressure. This can especially happen when somebody initiates their dose or increases their dose of the medication. So when appropriate, it's important to let patients know to be careful operating heavy machinery or driving a motor vehicle until they know how the medication makes them feel. The last precaution or warning I'd like to mention is just that this medication and other thiazide diuretics like this medication can cause photosensitivity or sun sensitivity. For this reason, it's important to mention individuals to use sunscreen or protective clothing during the summer months. Moving now from precautions to contraindications or reasons somebody would not be able to use hydrochlorothiazide. So it can't be used in individuals who are experiencing anuria. This is when the kidney loses its ability to create urine, as well as when somebody is experiencing a hepatic coma or hepatic pre-coma, so liver coma. This usually happens in severe liver disease um, when people's liver lose the ability to remove toxins from the blood, and this can sometimes lead to brain damage. Now, when somebody has been assessed and prescribed this medication, the typical dosing that we see is anywhere from 12.5 to 25 milligrams taken once or twice daily. It's common to see this dose move up to about 50 milligrams taken once or twice a day, and the maximum dose for this medication is 200 milligrams daily, which is commonly reserved for individuals treating severe edema. In terms of monitoring for this medication, most monitoring takes place uh, with blood work. However, some physicians will have their patients uh, weigh themselves each morning. During the course of therapy, there are some side effects that people may experience, so I'll go over some of these for you now. Elevated cholesterol, so triglycerides or LDL cholesterol, may be increased. Low blood pressure can be a side effect of this medication, whether that be regular low blood pressure or orthostatic hypotension, as we talked about earlier. Dizziness and lightheadedness sometimes occur. Headache happens in some people, as well as restlessness or insomnia. Diarrhea and constipation happen occasionally. Nausea and vomiting can occur. Some people may notice muscle cramps or muscle spasms. People may experience sunburns more frequently, as I mentioned in the precautions when I talked about photosensitivity. And finally, people can experience a rash with this medication as well. Allergies with medications typically present as difficulty breathing or hives. So if you are experiencing a rash and you're unsure if it's hives or not, it may be a good idea to present to the emergency room. That's all I have to say about hydrochlorothiazide or hydrodiarrhea. As always, be sure to use this channel only as a source of information and not a source of recommendations for your personal health care. If you have questions about the medications we discuss on this channel, just direct the questions towards your personal health care provider. If you think I'm providing valuable information and would like to see the channel grow, you can like the videos, share the videos, or subscribe to the YouTube page. That's it for today. Take care.